Hi guys, Lazar here. Welcome back to another tutorial where we continue our series of recreating famous buildings. I'm sure most of you know for the Aqua Tower in Chicago designed by Studio Gang Architects. In this video we'll show you the best and easiest way to model it with Grasshopper. So let's get started with parametric modeling and hope you will enjoy. I will start by picking a center for our rectangle. Now we'll define its size, its x and y dimensions will divide on half, construct domain and place in x and y inputs. And think of this rectangle as the base for our tower. Imagine we are stacking a bunch of these rectangles vertically and they will go all the way up so to the top of the tower and will space them out evenly. Wondering why? Well, uh, later we'll be grabbing points from each rectangle and wiggle them around using simplex noise. This gives our tower that wavy fluid look but we'll get to that part later. Now we want an even spread of these points on each rectangle segment. To achieve this we'll explode rectangles on their segments and based on their length we'll define how many division points will be generated on each side. Right now every branch has points from its rectangle segment but if we want points from the same rectangle together we need to use trim tree. After this there will be overlapping points at the corners, no worries, we'll use the cow duplicates to merge them into single points. Remember, our idea here is to move these points using the normal vector on the rectangles, but corners can be tricky, so to avoid any issues, I will fill the corners and project points onto this curve using curve closest point component. We'll use the T output or curve parameter to define horizontal frames on these fillet curves. With our frames ready, we'll move the points along reversed Y axis of the planes. And here's the fun part. We need to define how far to move these points. We'll be using a cool tool called Simplex Noise. So for those new to it, Simplex Noise gives us coherent noise which is like smooth flowing randomness. This component comes with 4D noise plugin, check the description below for the download link. You may wonder why 4D? Besides the usual X, Y and Z coordinates we get a time dimension making our noise pattern dynamic. So this component needs three inputs, the points we are moving, time you can play around with this to animate the noise and scale. Adjusting this changes the frequency of the noise pattern. The smaller scale value, the smaller frequency of the noise pattern will be. And vice versa. The output. Okay, values between minus 1 and 1. And I will remap this to say minus 4 to 4 and this determines how far our points on the curves will move. A little detour here. I want points, especially corner ones, to stay close to their original spots, so we'll pull division points to their closest corners. And this distance gets remapped from 0 to 1, meaning our four corners points get a value of 0. Using a graph mapper we can tweak these values for a smoother transitions. We'll then multiply these tweak values with our remap simplex noise results. Once we get the amplitude values, let's move those points. We'll now create a NURBS curve from the points, then we'll loft these curves to create our wavy surface. Up next, we are slicing this surface with a contour component to create floors. Here is what we need. Our starting point is the original point from the script's start. Our normal direction is the Z vector. And for spacing between floors, 
we'll divide the tower's height by the number of floors. So say we have 84 floors, each floor height is roughly 3.095238. You may notice the top contour is missing, but if we pass the value through the panel, the issue will be fixed. If you look at our reference image, our wavy surface blends with a boxy facade. So let's recreate this. Rewind to our original rectangle. We'll offset it inwards by 1.5 meters and extrude it upwards by the tower's height. This will be our glass surface. Now we need to slice this glass facade like we did with the wavy surface. We'll combine these two set of contours, but there is a step in between. To make our rectangular contours pop outside like on the reference image, we'll offset them a bit outward. Finally, we'll merge these contoured sets. Using region union, we'll get a single curve, which will turn into surface and extrude for thickness. And voila! Enjoy in this animation. In the extended version of this tutorial, we're going to continue building up our project. We're specifically going to focus on bringing more realism to the building by making glass panels on the facade, adding 3D frames to each panel and railings on the balconies. Also, we'll use some advanced techniques to fix the issues that we'll get along the way, such as orienting all glass surfaces toward the outside, unifying their UV directions, and unifying mesh faces that cannot be done with a simple component. This you can watch on our Patreon page and support our work at the same time. You'll also unlock our full library of extended tutorials and product files. If you'd like to know exactly how to create complex projects like these, and if you're interested in step-by-step -step learning approach starting from zero, make sure to check our Grasshopper Complete course, where you'll find over 60 hours of video material structured in a form of video library, covering in depth more than 500 Grasshopper components through practical examples. And you'll have access to us personally, so we can answer all of your questions right away. The link is in the description.